went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who set him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pot that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. <coughs> when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. And his son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied. And your father has killed a fatty calf because he has come <coughs> back safe and, safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with, with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate my friends. But when his son, when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, come home, you kill the fatty calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and this for him. You know the word of You will test him. You tell me. Chapter 22 and verse, verse 18. Sorry, you told me 21. Rather. 21 rather. and verse 18. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who does not obey his father and mother, I will not listen to them when they discipline him. His father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him to the elders at the gate of his tongue. They shall say to the elders, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a prolificate, a drunkard. And all the men of his tongue shall stone him to death. You must purge the evil from among you. All Israel will hear of it. And we are free. May the Lord bless us in the name of the Lord. And the passages that you refer to for you. Yeah. This morning, I'd just like us to focus a bit on recognizing from the scriptures <coughs> that we have just read that there are two prodigal sons. I know that traditionally we have heard about the prodigal son that is spoken of and that we have read of in Luke 50, but there is also a prodigal son in the Old Testament. So in the Word of God, there are two prodigal sons. Actually, the Old Testament has, has its prodigal son as well as the new. The Old Testament prodigal was stubborn, rebellious, and would not obey his father, Omar, although they would have chastened him. More than the prodigal in the New Testament, he was a glutton and also a joker. Today's Father's Day. <coughs> I know that it is with some measure of satisfaction and so on that some fathers <coughs> look back at the children and to be well pleased with how they conducted themselves after having been trained and been disciplined and been brought up in the home and family and so on. But there are some fathers who with pain and hurt, they look back upon those whom they have born from their loins and they are in a state of distress 
and dismay. This morning, we focus upon these two particles as we have them in the Word of God. What is synonymous, what is very, very um, significant is the fact that they were both wasters. But the difference was in the way they were treated. In the Old Testament, the prodigal, son that is spoken of, because of the way he lived and conducted his life, that was very displeasing to his parents, he was laid hold of, of, laid hold of and forcibly brought to the magistrate at the city gate. His parents were there to tell a sad story of this idle and stubborn son. And what happened as he was, as he was brought before the magistrate is that the penalty for such action, such rebellion, such behavior, the law was that he should be stoned to death. Until he died. Stoned to death. Stoned to death. So that this particular son, he is no more worthy to be called a son and is slain accordingly. There are many sons, as I've hinted before, of whom their parents will look upon them and have heard it actually been said by parents, I wish he was dead. Because such a child would have brought so much disgrace to the family. It's a sad thing to hear parents say. But they have actually said it on many occasions, I wish this child was dead. I wish this child had not been born. It is a sad state of affairs for a parent to come to that point in his or her life and to have to say that. We are trusting this morning that we have wonderful children in our midst of whom all of us as parents are proud of. And we want to encourage our parents to ensure that we do what is necessary to ensure that our children would not cause us much shame and grief and distress. It is something that is plaguing our world today. It is sometimes speaking on nations of our world today in terms of children and in particular sons who are referred to as wasters, rebellious, those who have brought much disgrace to their parents. Parents are saddled with much hurt as a result. Now, in the New Testament, the prodigal that we have read about, he also confessed himself to be no, no more worthy to be called a son. Yet, we see when he would have gone out and wasted his substance with riotous living, as one version would have it to say, when he came to himself, he came back to his father, and he was welcomed with the word of God tells us in plural, many kisses, many kisses. He was given a ring with different shoes, Best robe was placed upon him, and that the notes and tells us of the mark of sonship, <coughs> all these things that were given to him, and welcomed with rejoicing and in a very merriment way over the fatty carpet of skill and so on for that particular son. And we ask ourselves, why the contrast? Why the contrast? The Old Testament, prodigal, speaks to us of law. And the New Testament particle speaks to us of grace. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference in terms of the contrast. We are in the same condition as these particle sons in our sins and away from God. Unworthy, ungodly, unchristlike, sinners, as the word of God tells us, lost in sin, unsaved, wretched, as Paul spoke of himself. This is our condition apart from the grace of God mm. that has become real to most of us, some of us this morning, who have placed faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The law is that which condemns and shows our position, our state and condition before God that is a helpless one in itself. <coughs> so that it is a parable here of law and grace. The law it shows no mercy. Absolute no mercy. That's why this particular son, 
the first one that we spoke that you have before the last one you looked at, you know, reading, which is in the Old Testament, was stoned to death. Should he be found to be rebellious as he was and disobedient to his parents, no mercy was shown. As far as the Lord dictates, he was to be put to death. The Lord tells us, as a result of the fact that you have committed sin, there is a penalty to be paid. It produces and it recognizes no repentance. It cannot save the prodigal. He must die. Some years ago, as a young driver, I remember having driven a vehicle into Scarborough, and not known to me was the fact that one of the lights weren't working. So the police, they had a roadblock, and they were examining the vehicles and so on. And when it came to me, my turn, I said good night and so on, very polite. That been on his face, the police guy said, well, they have a one light here. I think it was in the back. I said, well, I'm not aware of it, actually. And, uh, and I know him. I've been there to get the phone. He said, well, ignorance is no excuse of the law. <laughs> in charge. I never forgot that. So the importance of checking your vehicle before you leave home and so on, and making it a, 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 a rule in terms of looking at your vehicle before you drive is something that has stayed with me. And I trust that the those who are young drivers are almost and even older ones to be reminded of the importance of making sure to check your vehicle comprehensively before you hit the mission road. Because you can pay a better price. Better price. Must die. The law says all the lights should be working on the vehicle, and if the lights aren't working, just one, then you can be penalized. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened there, in my case. And this is what we are seeing as it relates to this Old Testament prodigal son. As to whether this actually happened or not, I'm not certain. The Word of God does not record as to whether this actually happened. This was what was required for breaking the law, the prerequisite, in terms of if the law is broken, this is what I was going to be um, meted out to such a person. Our Bible, as you know, of course, it reminds us and it tells us about what is actually in the natural and also, as we see the Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament of various and many parables that he spoke and so on, of, tells us and points us to what can happen in the spiritual, it has spiritual significance. Those who trust in the law, and claim to be accepted on the ground that they have done or are doing their best. Do you not hear the law? Mm. My question is, do you not hear the law? Mm. Whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Let him die the death. The death. This is what the law requires. The Apostle Paul found it to be so. For he says, I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. Can you follow that? Has it not been so with you? <coughs> Did you not find when you promised to be good, to do good things, that sin revived in you? And show, and, 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 and there's no hope and so on. So that before God, you died as to any chance of heaven. That is what the law reminds us of. That you are a sinner. That you deserve of hell. That you deserve to be punished. Mm. This is what the law reminds us of. This is what the law tells us of. The law is as who master the bring us to Christ. That is what the law is. But by grace, the grace of God on the other hand, as we see in the New Testament prodigal son, it offers and gives repentance. By grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast, is what the word of God teaches. But grace, that overflow, that is that overflow of God's love to the sinner in Christ, is what we want you to recognize this morning. Notice what it does for the prodigal. It gives him repentance so that he cries, Father, Father, I have sinned. I am not worthy to be called your son. So when you turn to Christ, what happens is that there's that hatred that is 
uh, that is developed against sin. <coughs> and you condemn yourself to some extent in recognizing that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is Prince and Savior. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, In my flesh, there dwelleth like no good thing. There's nothing good in me. Paul the Apostle said, The more I try to do good, the more I try to please God by doing things that I think He'll be pleased with, is the more I do the wrong thing. And he cried out, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this state and condition? He was helpless as it were. This morning you wanted to understand that the grace of God gives repentance. It gives repentance. Acts chapter 5, and verse 31. God has exalted him, that is his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, at his own right hand, as prince and savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel, and by extension to you and I. That is what God has done through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He has exalted him, having experienced the pains of death when he died and was buried, and he rose again from the grave, and he now liveth in the power of an endless life, that is the man that God has appointed as Savior, as Deliverer, and to offer repentance. Mm -hmm. It is on God's merit, on the basis of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in repentance of your sin against God, that you can experience the salvation of God this morning, that is offered through His Son, and by grace are ye saved. Mm -hmm. Not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Mm -hmm. So the grace of God, the grace of God, offers, it gives repentance. Not only that, but the grace of God gives and shows mercy. It showed mercy to this young man when he came back to his father. The kisses of forgiveness was the outcome of compassion of a father's heart towards his son who was reckless and indifferent, rebellious. He was very frontish, I want to say. The first son, according to Israel's law at that time, was entitled to two-thirds of the father's possession. <coughs> the second son was entitled to one-third. And this boy came to his father and he said, Give me my portion. He was an arrogant young man. Give me my portion. I want what is mine now. He was not prepared to wait until his father may have died, as was the custom to you know, ensure that after death those things are passed on. Although it is also good practice now, to, even while the parents are alive, to divide up you know, the goods and so on and, and, and properties and inheritance and to let the children know exactly what is in store for them. Sometimes to their own detriment that can happen as well. Mm -hmm. Unless they don't have the right mind to understand the importance of using those things at the right time mm -hmm. and not feeling that because those things are yours as far as inheritance, that you just cash in and make a big waste of it. Mm -hmm. This is what this young man did. But in spite of what he did, his father showed mercy. Mercy. Oh, the mercy of God that has been meted out to us today. It is something that I want us to understand and appreciate. That where sin abounded, grace much more abound. The mercy of God, it would pour from us that which we deserve, which is sin's punishment by hellfire, separated from God forever. We deserve that. But God, in his mercy, Withholds what it is that is due to us when we place faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you accept the grace of God, the grace of God gives to us that which we do not deserve. Mm -hmm. But the mercy is there, listen, you deserve so and so. It's all right. I will withhold it. The grace of God, as shown to this second parable in the New Testament, it shows that the Son, although he was an outcast, when he left his father's home and went out and so on, he gave up his right to be called a son because of the way in which he left. But his father, every day that that young man was outside, he stood on his doorstep maybe and was looking expectantly for that young man to return because the father knew that outside there was no easy bed of roses. Outside is difficult. Mm -hmm. And that he found out when he went with prostitutes and all the rest of it and so on. His money was big, big though. He had plenty friends. Mm -hmm. 
But when the money was finished, his friends left him. He found himself having to work on a farm to feed pigs and so on, and desired to be fed with the very food that he gave to the pigs. Mm -hmm. Such was the hunger that was meted out to him. Maybe not as exactly as what, what I always spoke of this morning mm -hmm. when he was in Babylon. <laughs> but what it is to be hungry without food for days and maybe months, I don't know. It is a very horrible feeling just to be hungry for a little while. And you could be imagine to be hungry for many days, maybe weeks and months. And so my heart goes out, you know, from time to time for those persons on the streets. And you reach them from time to time and you offer them help. Some of them, you know that they take the money and they go and use it for other purposes rather than buying food. Right? But yet still, our heart should go for these people from back to time. Understand what the situation is like. This young man, he has both gave up his sonship, the right to be called a son. But through the grace of his father, the gracious actions of his father, he was looked out for. The father was seeking for him. And he's called a son for the return. He's called a son. He asked to be made a higher servant when he came back to his father. But grace gave him the position of a son because he got the best room, a ring, shoes on his feet. All that told that the relationship into which he was brought was a wonderful relationship. And that is what is meted out to the sinner man. Mm. Away from God, away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Having traversed this world of sin and having experienced all that the devil has to offer, that is in opposition to God, God in his grace still wants us to come back to him into that state of sonship. Mm. Where you can experience the blessings of being reclothed. Yes, because the word of God tells us that in sin, we are as well clothed in filthy rags. Because all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the sight of God. No matter how we try to dress up before God. Mm -hmm. Really and truly, God sees you on the inside. Man will see you on the outside. Well, clear that we want to do this morning. But as far as our heart condition is concerned, God sees the heart. And he knows whether you are in right standing with him or not. Mm -hmm. So that if it is that you have not repented of your sins, and trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, which is what we are inviting you to do this morning, then you are in a state of nakedness, mm -hmm. totally exposed before God. But he wants in his grace that you should return to him to experience the sonship that he wants to bring you in, into and to reclose you. So that by faith this morning, you can experience what it is to be a child of God, to pass from darkness into light, the Lord Jesus Christ has come for that purpose, to make you right, to make you a child of God. Mm -hmm. It was only yesterday that we were discussing in our training session for camp. But the fact that there are many who would pray the Lord's Prayer and thinking that you, because you're saying, Our Father who art in heaven, <coughs> hallowed be thy name and so on, that that makes you a child of God. It was the Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 8 and verse 44 who had to say to those same people who thought that way, when they thought that because you know, they had Abraham um, connection and so on, that, that gave them the right to God as their father. Jesus Christ said to them, Ye are of your father the devil, mm. and the works of your father ye will do, unless and until you have that association or that relationship which is through me, Jesus Christ, then you can't know God as father unless you come through the son. And that's what we are saying to you this morning. If you have to call God Father in the strictest and truest sense of the word, then you have to come through the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge that you are a sinner, knowing him to be the Savior that he is, and wants to make you a new creature in himself, as you place faith and trust in him, then you have a new relationship, a new association can be developed, and can be experienced when you come through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus Christ himself, Offer that invitation. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Mm -hmm. So that the grace of God changes your status from being an outcast to being a son, mm -hmm. a child of God. This is what grace does. And we want you to understand that this morning that you can experience what it is to be on the inside, in the inside place, rather than being on the outside. God wants you to come into his family and to experience the blessings of his salvation and to make of you 
that which he wants it to be. Grace also not only gives repentance, shows mercy, and makes you a son, brings you to a new relationship, but it also, finally, it fills you with joy. Amen. That was the experience in that household and that young man came back to the father's house. It was joy in the family. It was joy in his heart because he came not expecting his father to embrace him, but rather to reject him and treat him as a servant. But the father accepted him as a son. Mm -hmm. Oh, we thank God this morning that there's a way back to God from the dark past of sin mm -hmm. through the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to the Savior mm -hmm. and experience what it is to, to have a new name and new association. Mm -hmm. Any man in Christ, the word of God tells us, is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Mm -hmm. And there is also joy in heaven in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that cometh to repentance. Mm -hmm. This morning, you can experience the joy of sins forgiven, iniquities pardoned, and to be at peace with God when you have the joy of communion with the Father. They began to be merry. And we are not told in the word of God where they left off being merry. Perhaps never. And so for each returning prodigal, there is joy in the presence of God. We want you to understand this morning that God has your best interests at heart. That's why he calls him his only son, the Lord Jesus Christ. All the way to Calvary he went. And he lives life down, he lives his life down. He paid the price, the awful price for sin. What the law could not do in that it was weak in itself, God sent in his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Not sinful flesh, 